be here with you guys. Uh, recordings in process, so I'll start over. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Christian Laguerre. I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. Um, we're going to go through uh, AWS Lambda and API Gateway and we'll talk about serverless. We'll also um, touch on SQS and DynamoDB uh, in this talk. Um, I am a technical account manager with Amazon Web Services, but in this capacity, I am uh, instructing with uh, Yaltel um, Technologies um, and really excited uh, to be here tonight to uh, work with you on sharing uh, my passion for technology. Uh, specifically tonight, we'll be talking about serverless uh, and then um, giving um, Joshua an opportunity to help take you through uh, a lab exercise where tonight you will have a functioning application uh, that works and that takes advantage of um, serverless technologies. Um, so I've thrown the question into chat. Um, go ahead and see if you can figure out what that um, that is, the answer to that is, and um, we'll we'll uh, get started here in a second. Uh, but before we begin, um, just quick survey in the chat. I uh, want to make sure everyone's covered. If you do not have an AWS account, can you uh, just drop something in chat and let me know? So this way. I know whether or not we're going to need to start from that starting point or if we can jump right in. So if you don't have an AWS account, just say, hey, I don't have an AWS account in chat and um, we'll go from there. All right, uh, Joshua, you wanna go next and introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Josue Ben. I, I go by Joshua. Uh, I'm I'm a graduate from University of Maryland and I did uh, computer science. Um, and throughout my career, I did a lot of web de development and I've worked with a lot of APIs and AWS services. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ivy, you wanna go next? Me. Hi, I'm Ivy, Marketing Associate here at Yellowtail Tech. Hello, everyone. And Anya, do you want to go yeah, next? <laughs> Hi, my name is Yana, Marketing Manager at Yellowtail Tech. Welcome, everyone. All right, we're excited to have you. Um, so because I've seen so many people who do not have accounts, for those of you who do have accounts, I just ask that you sit tight while we go through this exercise. I'm going to take everyone who does not have a, an account right now uh, through the process. Uh, the reason why is tonight's, um, uh, the time that we're going to spend here tonight is not just me lecturing. Uh, in fact, I'm going to try getting through these slides as quickly and swiftly as possible so that we can spend as much time as we need um, answering your questions and also giving you an opportunity to be hands-on on AWS. Um, I think that there's a lot of value in actually um, trying these things, seeing things break in real time and having um, you know, uh, hopefully uh, what you would consider experts here to help you get through uh, some of those hurdles and um, get on to um, learning uh, by doing. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to switch over to um, just this web browser. What you're going to need um, to create an AWS account is two things, um, ultimately. Uh, a clean email address, that means an email address that you have not ever created an AWS account with before. I've run into this in previous classes where maybe you were in college or you took another class and you created an AWS uh, account there and then you decommissioned that account. If you did, that's fine. You just can't use that email address um, again going forward. So we'll need a clean brand new email address. Um, so if you've opened an AWS account in the past, don't use that email address. Um, you can quickly spin up a Gmail or Yahoo email um, address to, to get past that part. Uh, the second thing you will need is a credit card. Um, well, AWS will not charge you for the work that we're doing tonight, uh, they do require a credit card to be on file in order to create an account. Um, so that is the second piece. Um, and I can assure you that tonight, uh, when we're done, you will not have any charges and we will actually go through a cleanup process to make sure that all these resources that we've created are deleted and um, we can help show you how to secure and lock down your account so such that you don't run into a situation where um, you could inadvertently um, be in a situation where you would occur uh, charges. So we'll cover that tonight um, as well. All right, so if you're still with me and this still sounds good, uh, what I'm gonna ask from you is to hop over to, uh, open up a web browser and hop over to aws.amazon.com. And again, if you've already, uh, already have an AWS account, you can go ahead and sign in. Um, we'll need it later um, and just sit tight through, through this next portion. 
All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to speak as slowly and go as slowly as possible so that we have everyone with us. There are, by my account, uh, 22 people um, on the session. And so I know that at times it can, um, it can be easy to fall behind. If you do need help, um, everyone in chat that's on the panel will be uh, assisting with answering questions. So if you have a question because you feel like you fell behind, go ahead and ask it in there. But I will try to repeat things twice and show things twice as, as much as I can. All right, so I'm assuming everyone has opened a browser and that you're already at aws.amazon.com in your browser. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and click that create an AWS account um, button right there at the top. And, it's, and during this section, feel free, if you know what you're doing and you feel like you can breeze through this, not a problem, go ahead and knock that out. Um, and I'll meet you on the other side with, with the rest of the students. For the rest of you, uh, root email address, this is going to be the root account for um, your AWS account. We're not gonna dive into IAM tonight at all, but um, I will tell you that you will have a root account and then eventually you will want to create another account that you, you can use the same email address, it's fine uh, for that second account. Um, but you do not typically want to log in with this root user account. So this is probably gonna be the last time that you'll sign in uh, using uh, this email address uh, on here. But for me, I'm gonna to have to use one of my burner email addresses. Um, don't, I mean, you can email me at this, I just won't see it. Uh, ever uh, because I don't check this account. But for me, this is a uh, burner account. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, use this email address and then an account name. I'm just going to call it Jedi because uh, that works. Uh, and then I'm going to verify um, that email address. And then I'm going to get a verification code. So I'm going to go hop over here to Gmail, see if I get that code. Can take a second for that to show up. And double check my spelling. I think I may have, yes. Okay, so I actually need to back up. I uh, goofed up my spelling. This is why I like copy and paste, but let me just type this in real quick. There we go. All right, and I'll take that code. And for those of you watching this on the recording later, don't bother. I will have deleted this account by the time you watch this. Uh, root password, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just needs to be something secure. So uh, come up with a secure password. There's obviously um, some requirements here that you need to follow, so. So hopefully everyone's with me. All right, then we'll need to put in some contact information. Go ahead and select personal account for this. Um, go ahead and put in your, um, your full name and then a phone number. This is a burner phone number as well. So uh, hopefully I can skip that information. Oh, they want all, all, my, all my goods. All right, I'm gonna let everyone fill out this information on their own. I'm going to um stop sharing for just a bit um and i'm going to fill out this pertinent information uh real, real quick And there will be an option to uh, check, I have read and agreed to the terms of service. Um, and then the next screen you're gonna get will be for a credit card. Um, I will hide that from you guys as well. They do a temporary hold, you'll see in that blue box, um, there is a temporary hold of $1, uh, but they return that to you within like three to five. Uh, and I've seen that come back uh, quicker than, than even that. So. Again, you won't be charged for any of the resources that we're using tonight. There's a question in chat. Uh, I will let um, either Ivy or uh, Anna uh, respond to that question uh, regarding AWS and Red Hat.
So is everyone with me that's creating an AWS account? Has anyone fallen behind yet? It's okay. That happens um, almost every every class we do. You'd be surprised how many uh, how many folks have problems with this section. That's okay. All right. Hopefully everyone is at or past the security check. All right. Then you should get a verification code. I'm gonna go ahead and try sharing my screen again so that we can all be together. All right, you should be somewhere around here. Um, which is asking for a uh, security code. Grab my You should see uh, an option for basic support uh, free. This gives you access to um, the knowledge, some knowledge base uh, locations um, uh, that that are um, available uh, online. It also gives you access to the AWS forums. Um, in addition to that, um, one of the things that you're going to get, all accounts get this, is access to Trust Advisor um, as you pursue your uh, cloud adventures and and career, um, if, if you're going that direction. Um, in AWS, you'll find that Trusted Advisor is going to be something that you're gonna to want to um, get up to speed on. It helps you out a lot. Um, it's kind of like your dashboard uh, for your cloud accounts. So we'll go ahead and complete that sign up. All right, awesome, congrats. I've got this in here. And of course they want um, some material. That's fine, we don't want that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on this top orange button that says go to the AWS Management Console. All right, and so it's going to require me to log on. I should actually have in here some information um, from these emails. Um, one of them that we're looking for is my account number. Uh, oops, sorry. Yeah, my account number. There we go. Uh, actually, I don't see it in any of these emails. One more. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, my apologies. Um, back here on this, um, I've gone ahead of myself. Uh, back here on this login page, uh, we're going to click on the sign in using root user email. Um, that that sign in that you saw before, this I am one, that's where you'll have your account number. We'll get that when we log in. Um, but as a root user, we're going to log in using the email the email address that we signed up with. Um, later, you will create um an IAM user I, I believe uh Joshua's going to take you through that process um uh during his section and um we'll we'll look at what that looks like uh you can log in with that account and therefore you're not logging in with your root kind of super user account in, in the future so we'll go ahead and log in here uh so if you're not with me um and you're lost go ahead and open up a new window and I'll just do it um just so everyone is with me aws.amazon.com and you can click on the sign in button now. Uh, and you should have two options here. Um, that sign in button is at the top here next to the create AWS account uh, button. You'll see sign in, go ahead and click on that. And then you'll see uh, it has an option here for uh, root user and I am, we're gonna select root user and we'll put in that email address uh, that we signed up with. Right, and then that password that you gave um, when you signed up. Password though. And then you should get a security check. I can't tell what that is, so I think that's okay. All right, so hopefully you've gone past that. And if you have, you'll be greeted with your console home. So uh, just taking a look over at chat, while we were doing that. Um, uh, yeah, 
sending the session recording. Yes, that will be uh, that will be available. Uh, thanks for asking that question. Uh, is everyone with me? Uh, one's in the chat. If you're with me, uh, just drop one. Uh, the number one in the chat, so that's why I know. Kind of rough order of magnitude who's with me. Great. Fantastic. Seeing some ones. It's good. Okay. Uh, two's in the chat if you are lost and you have not gotten to the console home. You're either stuck on credit card. I've seen that. I've seen stuck on phone number before. I've seen people stuck on email uh, or their email uh, provider, especially student accounts for some reason. And some of the .edu's I've seen uh, people get stuck there. All right, I'm not seeing any twos. I'm going to assume everybody is with me. Uh, two, but catching up. All right, thank you, thank you, Anthony. All right. Um, this is, a, this is a good time to catch up because we're gonna pause here on the AWS account. We're not gonna do anything else with that, but we do need this to exist in order to do the next part. So I'm gonna move over to my lecture uh, and we'll talk um, uh, during this section. And then um, hopefully you'll catch up and I'll, I'll check back in to see that everyone has um, everyone's with me at that point. So let me just switch screens here real quick. Yep, no problem. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Um, it should say inter introduction to AWS Lambda and API Gateway. Just one person can say yes in chat, just so I know that you guys can see my screen. All right, cool, thanks Liz. Um, all right, great, so you've made it, we're here. Uh, we're gonna talk about serverless tonight. Um, but uh, the reason, uh, I guess before we even talk about serverless, uh, we really kind of have to touch on what is Cyrus and who are we? Uh, so we kind of already did introductions um, at the top, but real quick, um, just to kind of fill it out a little bit better. My name is Christian Aguirre. Again, uh, I like doing these workshop um, with Yellowtail Tech. Uh, it's an opportunity for me as a system engineer um, with about 20 years of experience to um, give back to the community. Um, I'm a big proponent of open source. Uh, and while I'm not a developer, one of the things that I can uh, freely give out is education. And I think that's really important. I think it's important to uh, democratize uh, Linux and open source technologies and allow people to create and for people to um, uh, better their uh, livelihoods uh, through computers and through um, software and uh, hardware. So this is my way of kind of giving back to the community, if you will, uh, since I can't contribute code. Um, I've got a little bit of network background. Um, I'm a Cisco uh, CCNA, uh, a little bit of DevOps background, a little bit of cloud uh, background. I have several AWS certs, uh, and I've been doing this for roughly about 20 years, um, trying to disrupt uh, the status quo in uh, the IT industry. I'm going to let Joshua introduce himself real quick. Joshua? Joshua will be going through the lab with you. Joshua? Yep. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, um, my name is Sho Josue. But I go by Joshua, and and yeah, I, I I'm a software engineer. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. Um, and I have this seven years of experience in web development, and uh, I also have some experience in uh in in Archie a little bit. Um, I did Archie when I was in school, when I was in, when I was doing my uh, associate. So I know a little bit of ne networking as well. Um, and I have three years of experience in freelancing and pretty much uh, my main skills as a, uh, as a software engineer, um, I do a lot of JavaScript works and and I have Java and Python, C, C Dart, or Camel. Uh, I've touched a little bit on other um, programming la languages as well. Okay. Excellent. All right. So uh, let's move on. What what's serverless and why should we care? Right. So uh, before we talk about serverless, I think it's really important that we uh, kind of define what that means, right? What does serverless mean? And ultimately, uh, there are computers behind this. It's kind of a buzzword in the industry. People get hung up on uh, 
the, the phrasing and, and the words that are being used, not necessarily the intentions and the technologies behind it. Really what we mean when we say serverless, well, maybe let's back up. Uh, I think everyone here understands that uh, machines, um, computers, the desktop that you're on, your iPad, uh, these are all computers that are capable of running services. Um, when you want to offer services to more than just yourself, uh, we run these on other computers called servers. Um, so if you didn't know, now you know. Um, serverless, so we're gonna fast forward a lot of years, right? Um, we're gonna skip past virtualization and containers and jump straight uh, to the topic of serverless. And that is to say that we are still using servers, obviously servers have not gone anywhere. They, they didn't go away magically. Um, They're still underneath. However, um, for you, the uh, system administrator, for you, the developer, for you, the business analyst, um, servers have uh, gone away uh, in the sense that you no longer have this machine that you need to um, care and uh, feed for and tag and run patches and updates on um, with servers. And with any application, as you get more customers or more end users, you need to scale those servers, whether that's horizontally or vertically, meaning whether you add more resources to your server or in the cloud environment, you change the size of your server from a small size to a larger size, or whether you grow more of them, right? I need more than one server now uh, in order to, to support the number of users that are using whatever it is that I'm providing, whether that's email, whether that's um, a website, a web application, a database, what have you. Um, as you get more users, you need to scale your servers. Um, the other component of serverless that, um, that we're gonna talk on um, is that um, serverless gives us the ability to uh, scale um, and scale in a way that makes sense. So as you grow with the number of users that you have, you are ultimately going to find inefficiencies. And usually the inefficiencies come in uh, the form of storage, uh, the form of memory, or in the, in the form of CPU utilization, where in that you have a server that is doing work. But at nighttime, perhaps nobody is using your application. Uh, perhaps you have a, um, a segment of time when um, your application will be really popular, say around the holidays or around some sort of sporting event, right? Uh, perhaps you have an application that um, allows people to buy tickets to go watch a show, right? When you're not um, selling tickets because there's not a show to, um, to, uh, to go watch, perhaps it's COVID, um, you know, the pandemic that we just came out of, um, you have a situation where you have these servers that are no longer being utilized, but they're still costing you money, they still need care and feeding in terms of patching and, um, and software updates and making sure that your, uh, your code base on there is not um, aging and that you're keeping up with um, whatever updates you need to apply to uh, your application. And then finally, um, the last component of this is availability and um, disaster recovery and fault tolerance. Uh, with serverless, because we don't have servers that we as system admins are going to be managing or as network admins that we're going to be managing, um, we are allowed to place our code wherever we need it to run, uh, whether that's locally in a specific region. Um, going back to our um, icebreaker question, how many regions are there in AWS? There's a lot, and you can put um, this code in any of those regions. Uh, and should a region or availability zone not be available for whatever reason, maybe you've run out of capacity um, uh, in terms of service limits, or you've uh, run into some other um, uh, situation where you're unable to run your code there, you can simply deploy it in a different region and continue moving on. And so let's talk about some of the disadvantages because um, nothing is ever uh, one-sided, right? So there are some uh, disadvantages. Um, and just frankly speaking, there's a little bit of vendor lock-in. Um, when you choose to go serverless, this is another layer of extra extrapolation. If we can stop and pause and talk about containers for a second, uh, containers and uh, WASM give us the ability to take our application code and run it literally anywhere, whether that's in AWS or another cloud provider or on your local machine. Um, and moving to a serverless model, uh, you are giving up some of those freedoms. But in exchange, you're getting some of those advantages that we um, talked about on the previous slide, right? Getting that fault tolerance, getting that availability, not having um, to uh, worry about uh, utilization and paying for value rather than paying for uh, resources. Uh, and then finally, there, um, there are some constraints around um, corner cases and gotchas. 
Um, I think it's impossible to uh, run this class without talking about, because if you Google it, you're going to see it. Um, some of the news that um, some, uh, some developers have found that serverless isn't working for all their needs. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second, but there are some gotchas, right? Um, it's not the magic bullet for everything, um, but it certainly does give us some advantages in some areas that uh, make a lot of sense. And in those areas, that's where we'll apply serverless. And tonight we'll look at an example of that with our coffee shop app. Um, but going back to, to what I was talking about, that is the AWS um, Prime Video um, example. So if you do search serverless on YouTube, you're going to find um, some pro videos that talk about some of the virtues of it. And then you're going to find some videos and some blog articles talking about how maybe people have committed too much to serverless. And so um, we actually have a really good example of that tonight um, in our coffee shop app. Um, this application is not entirely serverless. You'll see what that means a little bit later. Um, but it is a good example of how you could deploy a serverless um, framework around an application and get the advantages of both. And so uh, we'll look at that a little bit more. Um, so what are we going to do uh, today? Uh, we're going to, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Joshua is here. Uh, he's uh, one of my good friends. Um, and uh, he has helped uh, with this course by writing a small Node.js application that we're going to take advantage of. Uh, we're going to see how those components of that Node.js application uh, interact with AWS and some of the resources that we're going to spin up in AWS. Specifically, we're going to launch um, a AWS Lambda um, function. We are going to create an SQS queue, and we are going to create a DynamoDB uh, table and database that we will um, populate with uh, information about coffee shops, uh, and you'll see what that looks like. And then finally, we'll wrap up with some Q&A uh, at the very end. Uh, so as we started off at the top of this class, what do you need? Um, you're going to need um, your AWS account. So if you don't have that, uh, drop something in chat saying um, that you still need a little bit of time or need a little bit of help, and I, I will try to help you out in chat with getting your AWS account situated. Uh, and then finally, uh, Bring curiosity, right? Um, I think that's really important for this. Ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. If you don't want to ask it verbally, put it in chat. If you don't feel comfortable putting it in chat, email us afterwards, right? I want to make sure that everyone leaves here tonight uh, with two things. One, um, a, a solid understanding of serverless technology. And two, um, hope that you can take these concepts and apply them um, to ideas and projects that you have um, in the future. Uh, and then at the end, we'll, we'll talk about what that looks like um, pursuing those goals with Yaletel uh, Tech. So, all right, I think that's it um, for slides for right now. We'll come back and we've got some really good looking slides to, for our Q&A uh, section. Uh, so I think this is probably a good time to take a two minute break while we switch from me being presenter to uh, Joshua being presenter and um, I'll take any questions that people have in chat. But uh, in the meantime, let's take two minutes uh, while we do. Um, great, Anthony, fantastic. Is anyone else having issues getting to the AWS account? Um, if you are, drop a two in the chat and I will try to um, capture those names and help you out. But I think I think we've got everyone um following along which is awesome okay i'm not seeing any numbers in the chat so i'm going to go ahead and assume everybody's with us um, i'm going to take two minutes so that we can swap over uh and joshua uh you're welcome uh Luis, uh i'll give you give you the floor okay uh, let me stop sharing real quick all right the floor is yours joshua we have two minute break, right? Yes, uh, I'll throw up a um, two minute countdown on there and then we will switch over. So if anybody needs to grab a beverage, uh, take care of an email or text or whatever, uh, this is the time to do it. Um, we, will, uh, we will resume then. Let me share that.
Uh, Christian, can you uh, stop sharing? Hang on. And I do see a question in the chat. Um, Christian, did you mind answering that or? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be monitoring the chat. For you. Okay. So, yep, you can All right. Away. All right, thank you. Uh, does uh, everybody have a, uh, oh, let me share my screen first. Does uh everybody have this um document? I think that they probably do not. I will get everyone that document. I'm I'm working on that right now. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I won't share that. Yeah. So uh, I'm guessing that everybody has uh, already have their AWS account and and everybody. Has it all set? Just to clarify, that that document that you're missing, um, I will be getting that to you. It's just the steps that we're going through. So, um, no sweat if you don't have it. I will share the information on the chat, but uh, we'll get that document to everyone. Yep. Uh, if you have Windows um, computer, can you, you know, uh, put a one in, in the chat uh, so that Christian can know that way? Um, I'm using a Mac and things can be a little different on the Windows. It should be the same, but maybe some, some things might be a little different. For example, I'll be using the terminal, but you all will be using um, the, command, uh, the command line interface. Okay, right, so if everybody has uh, this document uh, or the PDF, uh, this is my GitHub. And if you click on the first link, it should take you to my GitHub and just um, download the zip file. Yes. Okay, so uh, if everybody has the document, uh, click on the link and download the zip file and unzip it. And you should see uh, this folder called, it should be named API for coffee shops, dash name uh, for my GitHub. And if you have, uh, if you are on Windows, you need to open up uh, the comment line that I will be using the, the, ter the terminal. Uh, since I'm, I'm on a Mac. Yep. And it, yeah, if you uh, if you uh, got your comment line open, uh, go to the root directory. Joshua, sorry for that. I'm going to have you close for just one second. I only got the link to them, uh, the correct link to them. So just give everyone, uh, let's give everyone 30 seconds to, to get the document. Oh, OK. Uh, if you're looking for the document, I've dropped the link. Uh, I've each dropped the link in the chat. Um, if you're already following along, the link to GitHub is there as well. So. Yeah. And if you're looking for the chat, um, I just assumed everyone knew where the chat was. The chat is at the bottom. Um, you should see that 
on your uh, Zoom uh, next to, uh, I think, participants, maybe Q&A, raise hand, should be there uh, towards the bottom or top of your screen. So. Uh, also, a quick note, if you have any other application or uh, your browser is open and you don't have a, a lot of memory on, on your computer, uh, I suggest that you close all those applications and uh, and just have only one browser open up. Does everybody have the folder? Okay. All right, yeah, I'll wait for another 30 seconds. Yeah, just um yeah just make sure that you are in the the root direct the directory will be the backend for folder yep that will be the root directory for folder it will be where we'll be um doing all the works yeah backend okay okay if everybody has that open and you make sure that in the terminal or in the command line interface you have a backend folder yes the command prompt yeah cmd yeah i think i was calling a comment one yeah Okay, yeah. if you are using a Mac, open up the terminal. You can do uh, command space and then type in terminal. And that should, it should open up the terminal. while people are getting that working i'm going to stop sharing my screen one second just something All right, uh, so if you have this PDF uh, or you have this open up, just uh, copy this command line, I mean, this command, and then paste it in your terminal or the uh, command prompt, and you should see. Actually, before that, I missed one crucial step. Uh, can everybody uh, open up the Docker? Make sure that you go to Docker and download Docker desktop for uh, whichever um, computer you're using. If you're using on uh, the, if you you're using a Mac, download it for for the Mac, and if you're using a Windows, download it for Windows.
I already have it uh, downloaded. That's why mine's working right now. But And if you already have Docker on your computer or you just finished downloading and installing it, yeah, just um, uh, copy paste these two commands in your terminal or command prompt. Yeah. I'll wait for a minute. Well, Josh is doing that. Don't fret if you don't have those things um, in your Docker desktop. That's that would not be normal. Yeah. So. If everybody has, um, does uh, everybody have their Docker's open up, or is it still downloading? Um, maybe a better question: Does anybody need some time, uh, a minute or so? Okay, I'll wait for another um, two minutes. Okay. It looks like a good file. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for two to three minutes. Well, Josh, uh, while we're waiting, I'll just explain um, why we're using Docker just a little bit and why we're using a container. Uh, while we told everyone this is a serverless class. So as I mentioned during uh, the presentation, sometimes um, you need uh, Windows restart. Yeah, I've seen Windows uh, need to restart um, sometimes. So sometimes if you need to restart, um, unfortunately that might, that might be necessary. Um, I think it depends on the version of Windows you're running. Uh, I thought they had resolved that with the latest version of Docker desktop, but. Um, you may need to reboot. We'll, we'll still be here and waiting for you. So if you need to, uh, yep, we'll be here. So go ahead and restart. Um, while, while we're waiting on restarts and everybody else uh, catching up, um, as I mentioned before, um, right tool for the right job. Um, most of this application is serverless. Uh, things that we're not going to have to create are a database. We will not have to create an API endpoint. Uh, we'll not have to create a uh, SQSQ or a uh, queue of any uh for any means uh if you needed to do all of that boilerplate this application would be significantly larger and a lot more work to bring up uh, and get started so while we are going to be running the application in node.js we could 
use S3 and Lambda to power this application um, without having to run a container. This is a good example of where it makes sense to run part of the application in a container and run uh, the majority of the application um, in the cloud using uh, serverless cloud uh, offerings and options that are available. So, yeah. Any questions about that? Just want to draw that that line of distinction that um, it's not all or nothing. Um, there are areas of gray uh, when you're developing on the cloud. So. Any Few more seconds to let uh, Sindar come back. Yeah. Is anyone stuck? There's everyone pretty much with us. Let's uh, let's do numbers. Um, if you're not with us, drop a two in the chat just so that we know how many people are just watching. Perhaps. Okay, that's fine. And you know what? This is recorded. You'll have the recording afterwards, so you'll be able to go back, rewind. I love rewinding on YouTube videos to see what they did um, so I can absorb it a little bit better. Um, okay, Anthony, no, no problem. Yeah. yeah, Docker can take some time. Um, I, I, I feel for those folks on Windows, sometimes it requires you to reboot, unfortunately, so. Yeah, so DP asked, why do we need Docker? Um, we technically don't. Uh, we could have created this application. In fact, uh, when Joshua and I started this, this particular class, we started working on in November of last year. Uh, I, the idea for it was earlier than that. I think Joshua, you and I started talking about uh, the idea around this class in uh, August of last year, but uh, it finally came to fruition here in May. Um, originally, it was not going to include Docker. Uh, we thought that that was going to be too hard. Um, but after a lot of back and forth and, and discussions um, and prototyping, we decided uh, it was probably good because we're going to teach a AWS ECS and Fargate class uh, here in 2023. So look forward uh, to another Yellowtail uh, workshop coming up in the future. Uh, TBD on the exact date for that. But uh, it made sense to go ahead and um, uh, bring Docker into into this, but we did not need to use Docker in order to do it, uh, to do this class. All right, Anthony, <laughs> keep up uh, as much as you can. Um, I think we're going to have to depress on. So uh, Joshua, I think uh, we're ready to probably uh, pick back right. up. I see Sangar just joined back. So I, I think we're ready to, to move forward. Uh, yeah. Sangar, just continue following the instructions and uh, you'll be there with us uh, shortly. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. After you, yeah. After you, you actually uh enter the second command. Uh, you should see these uh three lines. Um, this is pretty much Node.js saying that everything is, is running. And uh, then you can pretty much go to the browser. Copy the localhost colon 3000 and yeah, paste in the new tab. And you, you should see the application running on, on your in, in your browser. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the front page for the application. Um, it does have some curl commands as well that we can run in the terminal, stuff like that. But uh, for now, we'll just start uh, uh, with the prerequisites. Um, we need to get our uh, access and secret key, and as well as the re region before we can uh, run the, the application. So for that, I'm going to walk through how to you know get started with that in uh, uh, in your management council. So. Guessing uh most people are good here, right? So uh, if if you're already good here, can someone say yes or put a number in the chat? Let's 
let's do ones in the chat if you're with us. Um, twos in the chat if you're you're stuck and flying behind. Okay. Okay, so it's catching up. <laughs> Anthony's still downloading. No problem, Anthony. Uh, can I wait for another two minutes or should, should I just press on? I, I, I say let's press on uh, okay. and then we'll we'll have a, a break here in a second and um, see where everyone's at. So. Okay. So hopefully you are in your IM uh, council. If you are now, you can click on um, uh, the services. You can uh, search I am here too. It should come up. If you type in I am, it should be this one. The service, if you click on it, it should take you uh, to the I am page. Or you can also in the on the application, on the help page, on the easy way, you can just follow these steps and then you will get there. Just follow these steps and you'll get there. On the URL is already provided as well. So uh, you don't really have to follow exactly um, here. Um, but yeah, but so right now I'm going to create, um, let me delete these uh, users that I just done. Okay, so first uh, I'm going to add a user and I'm going to call it uh, shop user. Just click next, next, then create user. Once that's done, go into the policies. So we need to add the policies, otherwise none of our services that we're trying to uh, have AWS create will not work. So these permissions will allow the IAM user to have access to the Lambda, the SQS, and the DynamoDB. Um, to be able to uh, creating those services and and running them, so let me just do this as well. Okay, so I'm going to create a policy. This. Okay, so on policy issue, the steps that I'm following, following right now um, is pretty much under the create policy steps. And I'm just following these steps. I need to click on JSON, then delete uh, whatever's on the box over here, delete it and copy this code. Paste it here. Then click on next. We need to give a name to the policy. I'm going to call it um, shop policy. Um, description this optional. I'm just going to say uh, accessing AWS services. Then create a policy. Once uh, we have the policy created, we'll attach it to the user that we created. And to do that, uh, you is is also under the step right here. You just need to click on uh, action. First of all, select the po the policy. Then click on action. Then attach, and that should bring all the you uh, users that you have. Check the box for, check the box for the user that uh, you have just created, then click on attach policy. Um, how did I know the 
correct policy to use on? Well, pretty much in the development process, um, I, I test it. Uh, so based on the services that I'm, I'll, I'll need to use, um, you can pretty much find that service. Uh, maybe when I have a little time, I can go through the code uh, a little bit to show you uh, how, how I'm able to find this, um, uh, the, uh, the permissions to use. But pretty much they all listed here. We, we're going to be using SQS. So um, these are the API functions and, and the pretty much all the services and the functions, the API functions that we'll be using. Those are what the permissions required. And that's how I know, you know, which policies to use. But I think I can go through more of that uh, once we get through uh, this part. Uh, yeah, I will finish using, uh, uh, after I finish creating the user, I think we can have a break and then have everybody uh, catch up. Then we can move after that. Sounds good. Uh, once the policy is attached, um, click on user. Um, if you follow the instruction, you will uh, see that here, there's a break here. So once you finish the uh, creating the users is step one to seven. And here is where we actually creating the access and secret keys from step A to uh, 17, but we need to uh, attach the policy first. That's why there will be a break in the uh, in, in the steps. So we're gonna create, uh, click on the user, click on the user and there are tabs right here. Uh, click on the security credentials. And then if you scroll down, you should see uh, access keys. Click on create access key. Then here we're gonna use on uh, the third party service. Um, and check, I understand, then next. Okay, next. And then just click on create access key. And that should be generated. You can see it here. Um, but I'm just gonna download the uh, CS CSV file. Then once that's downloaded, I'm gonna click done. And that that's all the steps needed um, to create a, an IAM user in AWS and then generating um, his access and a secret key with it. So I guess we can pause here uh, as people catching up. And I'll also try to answer some questions. Is anyone else stuck with the Docker build or the Docker run? Uh, two in chat if you are stuck. So, so I, I know that you're working on it. it seems like, oh, Anthony, you're, you're stuck as well. Okay. Seems like people are getting, some folks are getting stuck on the Docker run. Um, just to be clear, when you run the Docker build, um, there's a period. It may it may not be apparent, but there is a period behind the backend that's important. Um, it, it shouldn't honestly let you build without it. Uh, it should give you a different type of error. The build x command uh, error is kind of um, strange. I'm not sure, and I'm looking into it, but I'm not sure why you're getting that that error specifically. Are you using Windows or is this on Mac. Uh, I, oh, Anthony's using Mac and having this problem. Okay. And uh, yeah, Sangar, I know you're, you're using Windows. Uh, this is Bill X.
Did it work for anybody though? One's in the chat if you were able to build the project and run it. I see no ones in the chat. That's a little alarming. Um, all right, Joshua, Joshua, let's back up and, and go through that Docker build um, process again. I dropped the command in the chat. Just to be clear, and, uh, there's a period behind that back end. Um, oh, yes, that's true. There should be a period. So, yeah, I should have be more specific on that. But yeah, there's a period after it and you need that period if it's not yeah you, you'll get that error if you don't have that period there so uh, where's the Uh, for the folks on Windows, I'm going to drop another command that's a little bit more explicit uh, for calling out the Docker file. It shouldn't be necessary. Uh, Docker runtime should find the Docker file if you're in the directory. Um, but I will drop that in there um, so that you have, have that. One's in the chat if you were able to get um, the Docker build to work. Yep, that period at the end is critical. Uh, yeah. so, so glad you were able to resolve that. Anthony, um, down the line, were you able to get past that as well? Luis, were you able to get past that? I'm gonna just drop yes or no in the chat, that, that's fine. Okay, not yet. Okay, uh, and both of you are using, or all three of you are using the period at the end of that Docker build command, correct? Yeah, if you're on a Mac, um, you do need to make sure that Docker is running. Um, you can do that by um, executing it just like a regular program uh, under applications, um, or if you search for uh, that's uh, the Apple button and then spacebar, and then type in Docker and hit enter, that will actually kick off uh, the Docker runtime as well. No problem, uh, All right. So does everybody, uh, or were everybody able to resolve that issue? Or let's see. I think so, Joshua. And I think some, some folks are, are trying uh, their Docker run, uh, the Docker builds uh, again. And so uh, yeah. let's go ahead and, and proceed. Now I'll, I'll keep an eye out on chat um, for those folks okay. that they're still struggling. Okay. Yeah. So So here is my access key and secret key by the end of uh, this 
uh, class, so we'll, we'll be deleting our uh, uh, SSA secret keys. Um, that I'm going to copy on the access key and on the application, go to the settings and you want to paste the access key here and then the secret key here. Check something. This. Okay, and yeah. So based on your region, to get the region, uh, uh, on your AWS management page, if you click on global or you should say the region here, you can just find the region you need to use. Uh, I always use the left hand side. Well, so if you are in East US East Virginia, you can, you need to use uh, US East one. And that's what I will be using. And then click on setup. So Yeah, so there's usually an error that happens when uh you run that. Normally, if you try it again, it should work. Uh, this time it failed, and that's because uh, we check our S3 bucket. So I think uh let me clean up my environment so I can play sure. Okay, so um, this, this issue, um, here, I'm going to manually create uh, the S3 bucket and pretty much just, and, and I'm, I'm going to put uh, the name that needs to be here as well. Let me, just give me one second.
And now we we'll have to be uh, just this name, uh, create this bucket and there's click on create bucket. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna have to like put a, a push a new a new folder after uh the uh once the video is live actually tonight. Just uh, because there's a little bit um so it's a little bit of normally you should not have a issue. Wait, this there's a little a little bit of tackle uh, where I, I didn't have uh the bucket name is not it has a capital letter in it so so I'm gonna try to fix that um sorry I I will uh update this and then push uh, the new files um uh, Uh, after after the uh, district, is it is it is it an error inside the the code base? Yeah, it's, it's yes, it is. Uh, the error. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Can we push forward without uh with the S three bucket fill? Uh, so yes, uh, I'll have to fix that real quick because um. Uh, it, it won't be, be able to like to get the lambda form function on there. So I'm trying to manually push it uh, there. Okay. So yeah, I should be able to. Just going to restart all um, my my uh, my Docker. Apologies, everyone. We did test extensively, but these things still happen. 
Um, sometimes it works uh, the first couple times and then you run into an error that you didn't expect. Uh, this is what I meant by corner cases. Uh, this wasn't the corner case I was expecting uh, tonight, but uh, it seems that this is how sometimes demos go. So we will uh, make sure that you get a updated code base uh, that has this fix. Um, we will do that before we, we wrap up tonight. So we'll push that out and then you'll be able to grab that from GitHub. Pretty much, I'm just manually up uploading the um, the function that uh, the lambda for function. Normally, it should have been done, but for some reason, um, it it doesn't work in this environment for some reason. Um, yeah, I'll 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 get that fixed and push it um, back tonight. Josh, do you have a different environment that you can demonstrate? Uh, yes, I do. So maybe we hop over to that and then we can show it what it should look like. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, normally this should be succeeding like uh, on the first try, but this should don't happen because there's a little delay uh, in, the in the server, but once you try it again, you should then fix it. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, now like once this is all pushed and created, uh, I can show in the AWS console that um, 
pretty much uh, the S3 bucket should be created. And uh, the file that I was trying to manually upload it, it should be uploaded there as well. Um, so here. Yeah, so this is the file. It has to be in your S3 bucket be um, before uh, the rest of the services run. And for some reason, the code in the GitHub are, uh, for some reason, yeah, I'll have to get that fixed and uh, push that tonight. But yeah, uh, once that's done though, we can see the application uh, uh, right here. I can create like a coffee shop app. I can uh, give it a rating, maybe four. I can get it, uh, an image like uh, Starbucks image. Let's see. You, uh, that was one that I used earlier. I think it was great. Uh, copy image address. Then let me say that. And you get this uh, notification here pop up. And, and there you, you should have uh, the coffee shop, uh, you know, that you added here. You should issue shop here. And right now you have to keep re refreshing to um, get the data each time, but that's just uh, just to show you know how uh, the, uh, the the services work. So yeah, that's why it doesn't we, we don't uh, there does no like auto refresh or anything like that. So that's uh, it's all ma manually re refreshing for now. Uh, if you really want, you can clone the Get repository and add all that if uh, if you choose to. Um, but yeah, uh, in the AWS uh, console, you can see uh, these uh, tables being cr created here. Uh, so if we go to the tables, we can see um, a coffee shop app table. Uh, it, it will be generated, and here we can see on the data that we posted, uh, we go on. There times. Yeah, and there it is. It has the store at the end. And, you know, and the data that we just pushed. And the process for this is, uh, is that once uh, you click push here, uh, once you add a new uh, coffee shop right here, it, it goes, it triggers the Lambda function first. Uh, it it trim, uh the Lambda function. Yeah, uh, right here. So which is the zip file that's in the big bucket? Um, if you click on it, you, you'll see it being triggered and it pretty much has uh, the function that it has. What the function does is uh, it, it, it connects to the DynamoDB and then what uh, the data here is pushed to the Lambda first and then from the Lambda function, it pushes to the, uh, to the DynamoDB here, which is a function right here. Uh, the client, uh, uh, I just name it the client um, right here, which is the Dynamo client that um, uh, AWS Lambda is connecting to. And then through that, it pushes uh, your data here to the Dynamo DB uh, client. Yeah. And um, the other thing is you can click on a teardown environment, and this will actually delete every. Uh, services that uh, is automatic, automatically generated, it will delete all that. And if I refresh the page, you'll see that the Lambda function won't be there. Uh, yep, it's gone. Uh, uh, the S3 bucket two will be deleted. Yep, uh, these were the ones that I already have. And that's about it, but um, 
I will go through, I think uh, somebody uh, was asking a little bit about how I figure out um, about the permissions and stuff like that. Uh, I, it's, uh, I'll go ahead and share my code a little bit here. Uh, see, uh, pretty much you should have um, everything. The code should, should all be the same, but I think um, there, there, there's just uh, one issue with uh, the bucket names that's not being pushed. Um, that needs to, to be fixed. But pretty much if you go to the action file, that, um, not the action file, but the create services, this is where I have all the services. And you can see that I have uh, this uh, API for, for function calls uh, through the AWS SDK. Uh, this actually um, allows uh, my code right, to connect to AWS and then run, um, uh, you know, what, if I wanna upload a, uh, a file to the S3 bucket, I can just use uh, the API form function to do that. And that's the same for the lambda function, similar for the create SQS. And these comments here allows me to know which uh, permission I need to uh, uh, have enabled on my, on the IAM user. So if I go to the policy, you will see that it's pretty much uh, uh, the same thing, the same name. So on the coffee shop, um, on the policies, uh, actually, I think it would be better if I just show it from the comments here. So dynamo scan or listable and all that, you'll see that those are pretty much in the code. So let me just take this as an example by create Q command. This, it will be S3 uh, is the SQS create Q. So it's just the first part without a command. And that pretty much allows me to know which uh, services and which, uh, yeah, which uh, permissions to have enabled, yeah. That should be all for it. Um, there are questions. Yeah, uh, Joshua, one, one question, and I think we should uh, walk through this, is let's uh, back up just for those who are going to watch this recording later and catch up. Uh, let's start back at the darker build um, command. So let's tear it down. Let's clean up the environment, tear it down, and then just kind of do it one more time um, for everyone uh, watching at home. Uh, I know it's uh, uh, time now, my time uh, is 8.32 p.m. Uh, Eastern, so uh, I know some of you are probably going to have to drop. I've seen some people drop already. Uh, that's totally fine. Uh, before you go, though, um, do you want to share, um, before we get to, um, uh, to Q&A here at the end, um, Josh, can I, Joshua, can I, sh I share my screen real quick? Yeah. Just want to um, invite everyone. Um, to give me one second, share. Uh, we'll get to Q and A in a second, but please follow us on social media. Um, you can um, uh, scan this QR code uh, to to get that, um, and then uh, as well as social media. If you're interested in uh, the programs that Yale Tail has, um, this is a taste of what it's going to be like um, during class um, for both Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux and for AWS Cloud. Uh, technologies, a 10 minute call. Uh, you can use this link right here. Um, just to grab a picture of it. And um, and uh, you can enroll uh, with Yellowtail or, or have a conversation with an enrollment uh, agent. Um, uh, Anna, anything you want to you add to that that I missed? Or Ivy, anything you want to add to that that I missed? Before uh, I get back. Uh, yeah, I posted the link in the chat. So if you want to get into a call with our enrollment advisor, just click the link. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pass it back to Joshua so we can get back into the tech and, and talk about that. But we'll Q&A as well uh, in the chat. And um, we'll go through the entire thing uh, one more time. So okay, back over to Joshua. Yep. Um, 
Let's see, let me share my screen. Yeah, so one more time. Um, this time I will use uh my working environment. Uh, give me one second. So yeah, once you are in the backend uh, folder, the root directory is the, the, the backend folder. And uh, having the uh, having downloaded Docker already, you, you need to copy like this whole command, uh, docker build t backend, and then there's a dot at the end. Uh, copy the whole thing and that will, um, you know, build a backend uh, folder as uh, in the Docker on uh, the Docker image. It will build a Docker Im image for, for it, and once you run it, it will use that uh, Docker image. Since I, I I have it open already, that's why it says fail because uh, my Docker is already open on the yeah on or. 3000, I've already had it running. Uh, I can delete it so that we can see that in action. To delete the container as well. Let me build it again. And then making sure that uh, you have the dot, then uh, run the, then you do the uh, Docker run dash P 3000, and this should open up the app on port 3000. And it's about, um, is there any other thing that I would need to show, Christian? No, I think I think that's it. Um, everything yeah. else is going to be um, part of the other recording. It, but we'll probably uh, chop this up a little bit so it's a little bit smoother. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I will push the new um new new fix tonight. There was a question, uh, I think it was a good question uh, from Sankar about uh, more demos like this and just, I guess, plug an ad uh, for Yaltel um, tech uh, demos. We've got more of these coming up. Um, later this year, we're going to be doing, actually fairly quickly here, we're going to be doing AWS CloudFormation uh, followed by um, Amazon RDS. And then we'll probably wrap up the year with um, a very big class on um, Docker and um, AWS uh, ECS, uh, which is Elastic Container Services with Fargate. So um, we're going to be covering some really cool ground. Uh, if you've taken all of our classes this year, uh, you've gained some serious skill um, for free uh, from Yaltel Tech, and that's our way of giving back to the community. Uh, we've covered S3 um, this year. Now we're covering serverless technologies, and like I mentioned, uh, those other classes that are coming up. So. Uh, if you keep following these classes by uh, end of the year, you might you might be ready for for a job. But uh, we certainly would love to have the opportunity to fill in the gaps with our Yaltel uh, courses on um, AWS. So, all right, folks, uh, Q and A. Uh, it's that time. So, um, let's see. I'll share my slides since we spent time on it. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for any of us on the panel? Um, Joshua, 
or myself. Thank you. Yep. No problem. No problem, folks. Uh, the question was uh, the Heat or Celtics in the final? Um, I'm going to go Heat, uh, Rob. <laughs> um, I don't adjust you if, if you're following the, the NBA, but, uh, but I'm going to go the Heat. Um, <laughs> uh, Lambda itself. So, uh, yeah, Lambda, AWS has actually put out a really good blog post. And if you go back to reinvent, I'm going to say it's reInvent 2018, maybe it's 2019, I can't remember. Uh, we actually do a, a pretty, um, or AWS does a pretty good job um, explaining that through um, kind of, I think it's a, a Lambda deep dive uh, video. If you just type in YouTube, um, AWS Lambda deep dive, uh, and look for the, the one from reInvent, there's a really great talk that goes into just the absolute mechanics of what's going on behind the scenes. Um, too long, didn't read. It's... Um, uh, AWS uh, Rocket, uh, which is um, a open source project that uh, Bottle Rocket that um, uh, AWS put out again, I think 2019. Um, that is micro VMs uh, that spin up. Uh, those micro VMs is it's a Linux environment, right? So um, inside that Linux environment, we have a code base. Um, I think we support 13 different code bases natively, and then you have the ability uh, using runtime API to bring in whatever code base you want. If you want to use OCaml, um, I, I suppose you could. Um, I don't know why you would. Uh, no offense, Josh, <laughs> he knows how I feel about OCaml. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you, you certainly could uh, bring any language into Lambda and then you can execute it, right? So it's essentially the ability to run um, your code in a uh, controlled, isolated environment um, where you get to dictate the CPU time and the memory um, for that uh, particular job to run. What's really cool about Lambda is that you can run literally tens, hundreds of thousands of these um, at a time or more, uh, and they can crunch through a lot of data very quickly. Um, I, I know customers who are using um, Lambda to chew through um, billions of records um, per hour. Uh, so it's, it's a crazy fast service um, that can scale from one Lambda invocation that you saw tonight up to running entire platforms and e-commerce businesses. So. Yep, no problem. Any other questions? Uh, there was a question from Sengar about posting uh, other videos to YouTube channel. Uh, good feedback. Um, we'll talk about that so internally. We'll have to think about how we want to how we want to do that. So good feedback, though. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? There's sixteen of you here still just, uh, I guess, enjoying your Tuesday evening with us, which we appreciate. Um, but if there are no other questions, uh, I think we'll, we'll let you uh, enjoy the rest of uh, your evening. Uh, Python is certainly one of those, um, one of those languages, yes. So, uh, yes, uh, relationship between AWS and Red Hat Linux administration, uh, why pursuing Cloud engineering, so DevOps engineering. Um, so uh, to that question, um, I think there's two parts. Uh, one, Yeltel Tech is um, has decided to focus on Red Hat um, Enterprise Linux because it is uh, the leading um, uh, Linux uh, distribution uh, amongst corporate uh, environments or in corporate environments. You find it all throughout the government. Uh, and that's not to say that other Linux environments um, don't do a good job. Uh, they do. Um, in some ways, um, I would even argue that um, they help push Red Hat uh, to innovate harder uh, and explore areas that they hadn't uh, considered uh, in the past. Uh, but when it comes to bread and butter and having everybody um, kind of singing on the same sheet of music and have a standard by which um, we can interchange um, easily, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, has had a long history of supporting that um, for large organizations and 
in government entities. And so for that reason, um, we, um, we are uh, Team Red Hat. Uh, in terms of AWS, um, you know, there are other cloud providers and uh, they certainly do a good job uh, providing services for their customers. Um, I'm a little bit biased as I'm an AWS employee myself, but um, AWS is, uh, uh, has brought um, a wealth of creativity and knowledge and innovation into a space that um, prior was very stagnant for a long time. Uh, with uh, virtual private servers um, for a long time being the only offering that anyone had. Um, as you can see, AWS has, I don't even know, um, hundreds of services at this point. Um, and so I, I think there's a maturity level that AWS brings uh, to the table. In terms of what you should, pursuing, should pursue for your career, I would say that's a passion question. Uh, for me, it's cloud engineering, even though I grew up um, in uh, the Linux space uh, and doing DevOps, um, you know, it really depends on what you're interested in uh, pursuing, whether that's uh, really pursuing cloud engineering or um, Red Hat engineering, Linux engineering, DevOps engineering. Uh, you know, you, there's a case to be made for cyber engineering, right? Where you need more cyber engineers. So, um, so it really depends on, on your passion. Uh, no one can really tell you what that is. I would say be curious, um, stay thirsty, um, explore, uh, build, invent, break stuff um, and discover what you like. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's uh, the only advice I can give on that. So good question. Ralph, thank you, good night. Um, Christian, so if any of you guys are interested in, in our uh, programs, if you like uh, Christian, Christian's workshop, uh, you can book a 10 minute intercall with our enrollment advisor. So I posted the link on the chat. Um, and yeah, that's it. Okay, awesome. All right, well, if there are no other questions, um, everyone have a great evening and a great rest of the week. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you at the, uh, the next workshop. Good night. Oh, teardown. Uh, Luis, yeah, uh, in terms of teardown, there is actually a function in the app that will delete all the resources that you created. Uh, and then from there, all you need to do is uh, delete the I am user. Um, and then that completes the teardown. If you want to go further and delete um, the AWS account, you certainly can. Uh, that's going to be under um, uh, inside of the AWS management console on the far right hand side under your, um, your uh, account name, whatever you called it. Uh, in my case, remember I called it Jedi. Uh, you can go to account and under account, you'll have the ability if you scroll all the way to the very bottom uh, to close your account. But just a word of caution, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you delete your account, um, you cannot use this email address again in the future to reopen up uh, an AWS account. So just uh, consider that. If you use your primary email address and you think that this will be um, a uh, you know, something that you're going to pursue in the future or you want to play with or even come to a, another workshop, you may want to just keep this account open and, and running. So this way you don't have to um, create another email address so that you create another account. Uh, but it's your choice. Uh, but in terms of tearing down the resources we did tonight, um, if you were able to get to uh, the point where you're creating resources, that delete resources inside the application will actually delete those for you. So, and then just don't forget to go and delete the IAM user and then you're, you're set. So. You're welcome. Okay. Not seeing any other questions. I think that's a wrap. All right. We'll see you guys at the next one. Thanks for sh uh, showing up tonight. Um, take care. Good night. Thank you.